The Women's Prison Association and Home, WPA, exists to help women who have criminal histories create lives that are not forever defined and limited by their crimes. Most women get to jail with pasts that include victimization and drug abuse, less than a high school education, and no work experience. Incarceration is effective punishment, but it is not enough to make them avoid crime when they come home. WPA helps women to take responsibility for their past actions and find the courage and perseverance to navigate through new doorways to opportunity. WPA was founded in 1845 by a group of Quaker women, led by Abigail Hopper Gibbons, one of New York City's prominent abolitionists. In the early days, WPA focused on the conditions for women in New York's prisons and jails and was heralded for bringing female guards into the prisons and improving living conditions for female inmates. WPA's founders wanted to help women stay out of jail, too. The agency opened the country's first halfway house for women returning to the community after incarceration, trained them to do household work, and helped them find jobs. Since our founding years, we've maintained that dual focus of helping individual women move beyond their criminal involvement, while also promoting improvements to the justice system and other systems that our clients encounter. We've come to believe that incarceration should be a last resort, used only when someone poses a continuing danger to the community. Prisons and jails are costly to operate and do little, if anything, to address and eliminate the underlying factors that lead women to commit crimes. Instead of incarceration, we promote responses to crime that are designed to end criminal behavior and thereby make our community safer. We encourage women to identify goals and chart a path for their achievement. We applaud their successes and we support them in making adaptations when they face inevitable obstacles, relapses, and stresses. The women who come to WPA need the same things as every other human being, a place to live, a way to support themselves, connection with family and community, access to health and mental health care. They come to WPA because a criminal conviction frequently gets in the way of meeting those basic needs. Our criminal justice system is designed to punish. In most cases, we don't go further and try to understand and eliminate the reasons that people commit crimes. When women find their way to WPA, they are frequently in crisis and we respond to their immediate needs, usually a place to stay, something to eat, a subway pass, and some toiletries. When the crisis subsides, they can think about next steps and we urge them to identify things that they'd like to change. Maybe they want to stop living on the street or see their children or just go one day without getting high. We want women to see that they have more choices than they may have imagined and that their actions are the key to what happens in their lives. Our clients have relied on drugs and alcohol to avoid feelings that make them uncomfortable. But without them, they may have difficulty tolerating a normal range of emotions. A person who habitually responded to insults and slights with anger and violence may have trouble doing something different. When someone bumps into a woman, even if by accident, it can be a huge challenge for her to take a deep breath and walk away. The idea of losing face or appearing weak can be terrifying. If I'm not the edgy, tough woman I have always been, who am I? As human beings, we sustain new behaviors after several episodes of positive reinforcement. WPA staff know that it is critically important to offer honest, constructive feedback when women take brave steps into new territory. We know, too, that people fail to do things when they're not sure of themselves. We practice doing things with women so that they know what to expect and how to act. For example, a woman may be asked to go to a job interview at a time that conflicts with her parole appointment. Most clients think that their decision is which appointment to skip, and it doesn't occur to them that they could reschedule. They haven't had success when they ask for things, and they don't know how to ask in a manner that is likely to be met with success. We practice those conversations, everything from phone manners to role-playing the conversation and the different ways it could go. These incremental activities and successes promote confidence and become the building blocks of a woman's transformation. Whenever possible, we tell women what they can expect in different situations, like riding the subway with a metro card, applying for public assistance, or ordering a drink in Starbucks. We don't wait for a woman to tell us that she doesn't know what to do. We model appropriate behavior and take away the mystery that can exacerbate feelings of alienation and incompetence. WPA is successful because we believe that every day is a new opportunity to evolve, and our acceptance of every woman's story fuels hope and possibility. We understand that as women, we define ourselves through our relationships with others, and we respect all of those relationships. 
More than 75% of incarcerated women have children, and being a mother can give rise to need, guilt, and hurt, and can also be a motivating force. We work with families whose children are at risk of entering the foster care system. Mostly, the authorities are involved because mom is using illegal drugs or abusing alcohol, and the kids seem to be neglected. When we go to family homes, we see that women are doing the best they know how. The parenting they received was inconsistent, and they never learned about child development, housekeeping, constructive discipline, or how to encourage literacy. Like many mothers, they are stressed by the demands of children, intimate partners, and other family members, but they don't know how to find support and resources that would ease the burden. Nearly all the families we see become better able to manage their lives and relationships. This work is rewarding for us, and it is also good for individuals, families, and communities. When children are prepared for kindergarten, they are more likely to graduate from high school, and kids who graduate from high school are more likely to become financially stable and are less likely to be involved in the criminal justice system than kids who drop out. WPA is also successful because we view the whole person, her strengths and her needs. We find it crippling to look at women solely through the lens of their crimes and the problems they seek to solve. We see change occur when women see themselves as capable and strong. Looking only at the flaws, we could not lay a foundation upon which to build. We want to help women accept responsibility for their actions and guide them through the process of repairing the harm they caused so that they can move forward and create better stories for their future. WPA is effective because we acknowledge that we cannot create success by ourselves. Just as women, including our clients, are driven by relationships, so too is WPA. We work to maintain good relationships with clients and with colleagues and government agencies. Through these relationships, we activate resources for our clients and assure that we will be heard when we need to advance change and have influence over policy and practice. Our programs are effective because we appreciate the totality and complexity of a woman's life. We are willing to help her deal with many different concerns and goals simultaneously, and we know that there is value in women trying things their own way, even when we can see that the course will fail. Both failures and successes serve as chances to connect what a woman does with the way things turn out. Even the bad results demonstrate that she is in control of the direction of her life. The importance of relationships cannot be overstated. One of our programs matches women who are leaving prison with mentors in the community. A few years ago, an outcomes assessment was conducted on a sample of clients from the mentoring program. The results were remarkable. 93% remained arrest-free 18 months after being released from prison. 98% improved the stability of their housing, and 96% enrolled in drug treatment services. WPA measures success by how individual women reach their goals of achieving stable lives in the community and avoiding future criminal involvement. In simple terms, when there is a reduction in recidivism and some evidence of stability over time in a woman's life, we view this as a success. We like to focus on decreased criminal justice involvement and the associated positive impact this has on families, communities, and public safety. If we have a year when 200 women find housing after having been homeless, that's a big success. We also look at good ratings from funders as an indicator of success. We measure organizational success in terms of staff longevity, positive vendor relationships, and strong partnerships with colleague agencies and with community institutions where our programs exist. The biggest misconception about the Women's Prison Association is that we are a prison, and that's really the opposite of how we want to be seen. We believe that prison should be the exception. The majority of justice-involved women have been convicted of nonviolent crimes that are drug-related. Sending a woman to prison may temporarily stop her drug use, but when she gets out, she will need new ways to cope with the feelings and demands that she could avoid in the past by getting high. Prisons were created to make communities safer by removing the people who were considered dangerous, not to make the people in them less dangerous. The prison system was not designed to prepare people to live law-abiding lives in the community. That's where we come in. Our focus is to help them abide by the rules while they're in prison and to foster personal accountability and growth so that women can emerge from criminal involvement with real prospects for life as law-abiding members of the community. Another misconception about WPA is that we don't care about men. We believe that whatever we learn from doing good work with women will benefit efforts with men. WPA focuses on women in the system in large part because they are otherwise ignored and dealt with as an afterthought. 
When women go to prison, they lose their housing and their access to financial resources and medical care. And if they have children, their children's lives are turned upside down. Working with a woman who is in the criminal justice system to make changes in her life also means decreasing her dependence on other systems and resources, including foster care, public benefits, court costs, and shelter. Through our strong relationships with local, state, and national corrections departments, we've created a place at the table for WPA and are regularly called upon as experts. We often encounter people with a negative bias against incarcerated people in general, and female inmates in particular. Nationally, we've been a major force in educating the public about the differences in how men and women arrive in the criminal justice system and why that is important. WPA partners with researchers to help inform their work. We've implemented innovative program models, including Sarah Powell Huntington House, a program where women and children reunite in housing. We've learned from our experience and have applied that knowledge to influence policy and practice at the often complex intersection of the child welfare, criminal justice, and homelessness systems. One issue that we have faced since our founding 167 years ago is society's really harsh judgment of women, especially mothers, who fail to adhere to societal norms of behavior. Myriad factors, conscious and unconscious, shape our views of what a mother should be like, and none of our notions of a good mother allow for criminal behavior. It has been a challenge to make the case that criminal justice-involved women matter and that it is worthwhile to invest in them. Although women comprise only 10% of the prison population, Investing in evidence-based interventions for them reduces their future criminal behavior, promotes stability in their families, helps their children achieve academic success, and breaks intergenerational cycles of poverty. Still, it is challenging to implement these interventions because the relatively small number of justice-involved women bars economies of scale, making it more costly to work with women. However, when we consider the range of immediate issues that women face in addition to their criminal justice involvement, health needs, mental illness, drug addiction, children in foster care, the need for education and job training, and their related costs, it becomes clear that gender-specific interventions for justice-involved women would result in financial benefit to a range of institutions and processes beyond prisons and courts. With more funding, we would reopen our Residential Alternative to Incarceration program and make those beds available again. We would like to establish housing for women who are making the transition from prison to the community, and we'd like to create permanent, sober, communal housing for women who have histories of criminal justice involvement and chemical dependency. We would also expand our capacity to provide assistance to any woman with criminal justice involvement. With additional resources, we would increase our ability to do work with families, offer adult basic education classes, and reestablish our job readiness and placement services. We'd also like to offer a gender-specific women's drug treatment program. There is a huge gap in the application of gender-specific risk and needs assessment of women facing arraignment. We could and would love to do diversion work that prevents women from having a criminal conviction. This approach would be a step better than alternatives to incarceration that divert women from doing prison time. An alternative to conviction program would allow us to focus on addressing and alleviating the conditions and the issues that led a woman to crime in the first place. She would identify goals related to her criminal risk and would be supported in her efforts to execute an action plan in the real world environment where she ultimately would need to sustain these changes. What better classroom than the actual homes, schools, jobs and communities where we want women to participate as law-abiding neighbors and citizens.